Good Monday morning! Today we are going to explore the wonders of declarative programming, something that React has managed to popularize in recent years. And declarative programming is extremely useful for all kinds of programmers, so don't turn this video off if you're not a web developer and don't care about React because there are things to learn here. Don't worry if JavaScript is not your thing, there's not gonna be a lot of code in this episode, probably not any at all, uh, and I'm not going to assume that you know anything about React either. With that said, let's get into it! I am MPJ and you are watching Fun Fun Function. Can you post a comment down below and tell me your feelings about React? Because for me, when I first saw React, I really hated it. But nowadays, for every year that passes, I find myself liking React more and more. And I feel that I, I need to know what people in general feel about React, because to me, the main big thing with React is that it allows us to do declarative programming without the drawbacks that are traditionally associated with declarative programming. A lot of people don't get the benefit and, and how huge declarative programming is and how it locks in and relates to React. I suppose that this might be because I guess that declarative programming is a is a bit different and hard to wrap your head around but it might also be because react has these other features that you you get caught up in as a developer and you develop a strong opinion about them and you start seeing those features and not seeing the forest for all the trees so to speak and i really think that declarative programming is at the very core of what React allows us to do. So we're gonna talk about that today. Declarative programming and uh, in the context of React. What is React? React is a library for building the view of applications. It was initially just for web applications, but over the years people have started using it for uh, native applications as well. Most developers that use React couple it with a technique called Flux. It restricts the data flow uh, of the application to flow in only one direction. So imagine an application uh, where you have a view and there's some button in that view. That button will not be allowed to change anything in the view itself or even change any state itself. It will dispatch a click event and it will end up in this thing, the store, which is responsible for doing the actual manipulation of, of the state. And then whenever the state updates, the entire view will re-render based on the state. So this is a unidirectional data flow. It only goes new, new, actions goes here and state flows here. State change only happens because an action went this way and the view is only updated from the state changes. It's a very simple flow. So what's the benefit of doing that? Well, it allows us, it gives us a structure for doing declarative programming. And declarative programming gives us an application that is easier to reason about and where fewer things can go wrong. When you're doing declarative programming in, um, in the context of an application like this, you are simply stating that the view should be a certain way given a certain state. For example, you might imagine given that payment is currently processing, like you have pressed the, the pay button, the pay button it's disabled. So with declarative programming, you are not quite describing how the application should do things. You are simply stating or declaring a relationship. If the concept of mapping makes sense to you, you can think of it that way as well. The opposite of declarative programming is imperative programming. And when we're doing imperative programming, you, we are telling the computer more directly what to do. We are listening to the payment event and depending on what that payment event said, we will be setting the disabled attribute to true or false on the button. 
The big advantage with declarative programming is that it's easier to reason about. Imagine that we're doing imperative programming and uh, there's a uh, payment failure. Then we need to listen to that payment failure uh, event and update the button accordingly and explicitly. In a declarative model, that code might not even be necessary. In React and Flux, we would just have the payment failure update the, uh, the state to have the state say that I am no longer processing a payment and any existing elements that, uh, in the view that depended on that state will just poof, update automatically. If you have any experience with declarative programming, please write a comment down below because for, I want to know because I, for me, declarative programming has, I feel like it has made me a much better developer. I feel that declarative programming is an extremely nice way of writing software. It feels like almost everything becomes these simple functions that take state as an input argument and spit out a view. This is very simple to reason about and there are very few things that can go wrong and it's also extremely easy to test programmatically. Declarative programming is very very nice when you manage to pull it off. But a problem with declarative programming is that in order for us to, to pull it off it needs to redo a lot of work all the time. In declarative programming we, we look at the state and we determine what the button in the view should look like depending on that state and we just recreate that button from scratch and throw out the old button. We just throw that button away, we don't even look at it. And this is very expensive compared to imperative programming which only does exactly what it needs to do. Imperative programming doesn't destroy any buttons. Imperative programming is it's very frugal. And this is why declarative programming was held back, uh, at least in, uh, in front-end development, because it was doing so much re-rendering all the time and you were, you were seeing flickering and it was hard to get the performance out of it that we needed. And this is especially true in web development because of the DOM. In case you're not a web dev, the, uh, the DOM, the document object model, is how we, uh, how we build interfaces on the web. It's how we control how things are rendered. It's pretty heavy performance wise, so we want to touch it as little as possible. And this of course makes declarative programming problematic because we are destroying and creating things all the time. And this is where React comes in with its virtual DOM. When you're building React applications, you are, you're rendering DOM, but you're not rendering real DOM. You're rendering a virtual DOM, which is a version of the DOM that is much cheaper because it doesn't actually render to screen. What React then does on every update is to look at the rendered virtual DOM and compare it to the actual real DOM and it automatically figures out the smallest possible change that it can make to the real DOM in order to make it mirror the virtual DOM. Doing this dance with the virtual DOM it's not quite as good performance as, as doing it manually in the optimal way but getting there and doing it optimally and, and correct uh, manually is that that is that is harder and unless you are a very good developer and or you're spending lots of time on it your implementation might actually end up being slower and containing uh, more bugs than the declarative implementation. And in React you can actually fall back to manual rendering for individual specific parts of the, uh, of the application. And I think that is really really nice when we're dealing with abstractions like this. So again, using a virtual DOM it allows us to do declarative programming and get the benefits of that while also at the same time get like 80% oh, of the performance benefits that uh, imperative programming would normally give us. 
And there are other examples beyond React and, and front-end interfaces uh, that are examples of this, this technique or tools that does imperative programming for us. An example that I would like to bring up is Firebase. Firebase is an observable database that Google provides. And it allows us to interact with the database as if the database existed on the client, even though it doesn't. For example, you, you load a user in, in the database and it goes away automatically and fetches the, the user from the actual real database on the backend. And when you then later fetch the user again, it has actually cached the user automatically on the, on the client so that bam, it's now instantaneous. So it's kind of sort of like you don't have to care that the database is on the server. You can just, and this makes the app reasonably fast, even though you wrote it in a, from a performance standpoint, super naive way. So Firebase reminds us of the virtual DOM in the sense that it, in, in both cases, it's optimization that is being automated for us. So in one case, it's the uh, DOM manipulation that is expensive and that is being automated. And in the other is the network calls to the server and fetching data that is being optimized for us. If you use Firebase and React together, you will experience this. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. You have uh, the virtual DOM and React on one end and uh, Firebase on the other end. And then you can kind of get away with just having a bunch of, of these transformation functions state view in between and it just locks together. And even though it's super naive, it is still pretty fast because you have your friends on either side doing the optimization. And I don't want to oversell it because it's not quite as fast as doing it manually. And it will also be very annoying if you run into some kind of performance issue that React or Firebase doesn't handle well. But in most cases, declarative programming, when you are backed by auto-optimizing tools like Firebase or, or React, it will save you a lot of bugs and a lot of time. I'll leave you with a funny thought too. In a fantasy world, where we have infinite processing power and uh, uh, zero latency and infinite bandwidth, we don't need tools like React or, or Firebase or, or observables. The same goes for Rx, which is a library for creating complicated observables. If we had infinite performance, we would not need that library. We could just replace the entire Rx with just functions that just do transformations and just have those functions run all the time. So for the longest time, I thought of observables and, uh, as an architectural pattern, which it is, but tools like Rx and you know the functions in that library is like, uh, like debounce, for instance, that's not architecture related. That is just related to optimization and performance. That's, that's the only reason why we need that. So declarative programming, it's nice because it is easier to reason about and there are just fewer things that can go wrong. And React helps us do declarative programming by uh, reducing one of the big uh, drawbacks of declarative programming, which is performance. And that's it for today. You have just watched an episode of Fun Fun Function. I release these every Monday morning, 0800 GMT. If you don't want to wait until next Monday, you can watch this episode. It has been picked out for you specifically by the brain in a jar that Google brands as machine learning. I am MPJ. Until next Monday morning, stay curious.